floss tube is Jo here and this is my first floss tube video um, I'm a little bit nervous um, but I've decided that this is something that I wanted to try um, I've been watching floss tube for a while and I love seeing everybody's videos so I thought I'd give it a go because like a lot of people out there I don't actually know anybody that does cross stitch um, in the real world as I call it um, there's nobody um, there's nobody to talk to about it there's nobody to show what I've been doing um, and it's a real shame because it's a massive part of my life um, and it's my passion it's something that I love and not being able to share that with somebody um, is quite sad um, and I'm just very thankful that I actually found this community I mean the floss tube community is absolutely wonderful and you know these Facebook pages like Stitch Mania and many others um, and everybody's just so nice and welcoming and supportive and you know everybody leaves such wonderful lovely comments about the stuff that you're stitching and you know your progress that you've made and it really inspires and enables it, there's a lot of enabling um i've bought some stuff that i've seen and we've all done it we've all been you know enabled and um it's just wonderful to be part of that even though it's only a small part of that and now hopefully doing floss tube i'll be able to get a bit more involved in that um yeah it's it's just been it's been wonderful um and yet i just I, you just everybody's just so nice and um i can't get over you know you post something um on instagram or on stitch mania and the comments there's just there's loads of them you think oh nobody's gonna comment on this nobody's gonna like it and it just shows you and surprises you that there's just so many people out there that are into the same thing that you are um, but you don't get to do it face to face but hopefully this is a new way of being able to reach people so yeah I'll uh, tell you a little bit about myself so I live in England if you can't tell from the accents I live up north um, it's always dull and raining we're supposed to be in summer i've been waiting four days to make this video um hoping for a little bit of sun so that i can film and i wanted to do an update video at the end of the month and i thought well if i don't do the intro video soon i'm not going to get that up so um i've decided today's the day so i'm sorry about the lighting if it's not fantastic i did put the light on behind me but it was a little bit too much so i've got the big light on above i'm sat near the window to hopefully get some lighting so i just hope that you can see the things that i've been stitching um i'll tell you the reason why i've decided to do this video is because and i won't get into it too much on uh, my introduction video um, I decided to do the introduction video first was because I've never done this before like I said I'm very new I'm new to floss tube it's my first video and um, I don't know how to edit so I'm just going to record this in one I'm doing it on my phone and then I'm going to upload it um, I didn't know how long it was going to take to upload I didn't know I got no idea how long my phone's going to record for so I didn't want to try and do all my intro and what I've been working on in one video because I'd didn't really think it I'd well I don't think it's going to be able to be done in one so I thought I'd split them up so the reason that I've decided to do floss tube is because um I've come up with a new project that I've started I started it at the beginning of May so I'm about to go into my third week of this project and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing a new start yes a new start 55 new starts in a year now you're all thinking 55 new starts in a year there's only 52 starts in the week there's only 52 weeks in a year even um so where's the 55 come from so the 55 come the 55 has come from one start every week on a monday for a year plus one start on my birthday which is next month one start on christmas day because we all want to start something on christmas day when we've opened it if you get stitchy stuff and then one start on new year's day which will be my new year's start 
So that's where the 55 comes from. So the plan is to do 55 new starts for the year, one every week on a Monday. I will work on it from Monday to Friday, so five days I get to work on it, and then it gets put away, and then I'll pull out a whip, which I work on on a Saturday and Sunday, and then Monday's my next new start. The reason that I've decided to do this, and I, I won't go into it too much, but um, I had the worst year of my life last year, and I ended up being extremely ill. Um, and I stopped stitching for at least five months because I just couldn't concentrate. I couldn't find any inspiration. I couldn't find my stitchy bug. It had gone up, go up, packed its bags, and it had flown out of the country. It wasn't just visiting a relative for a weekend. It had gone on a long vacation around the world, doing everything that it wanted to do without me being involved in any way whatsoever. It had left the building and decided not to return for a very very long time um so i just stopped stitching i just put everything in boxes and just there was just no inkling um i just it was just gone i couldn't concentrate it was it was horrible it was it was so strange I didn't miss it i didn't think about it i didn't feel guilty about it i didn't worry about it I didn't it was it was not a good time so a couple of weeks ago it returned it was back off holiday it had unpacked it was like I'm here I'm ready to start what we stitching where we what what, what we doing let's get some plans in place so I was really pleased so I thought well I, I took a big break from it I've got all these wonderful things that I want to stitch. I've got all the things that I've got saved in baskets, um, on different websites, uh, favourite lists, wish lists. I've got all sorts. And I thought, well, if we're going to do this, let's stitch the things that you really want to stitch. So I am starting my 55 things and they're all the things I want to stitch. They're wonderful things that I've really looked forward to stitching. So the idea is that... It will be split. It was the idea originally was that it was going to be split into four parts. So the first week was going to be a kit, so any kit that I wanted, big or small, it didn't matter as long as it was something that I really wanted to stitch. The second week was supposed to be a magazine pattern. The third week is supposed to be a book pattern, and then the fourth week is an internet pattern. I'm going to have to change it slightly because I'm only in my third week and I've realised that looking through everything and planning what I want to stitch, um, it's it's not going to work that. Um, I've got a few kits that I like. I've got loads saved that I can buy. Um, the one that I'm pr struggling with is the magazine patterns. Um, I do have a few magazines, but there's a lot of things in magazines as things that I wouldn't normally stitch. The way that I like to stitch is I like to stitch things that I can put in my house. Um, things that I'm going to put on my wall, um, things that match the colour schemes that I've got, um, things that I'm going to spend a lot of time stitching and um, that I'm going to enjoy stitching. I do a lot of full coverage pieces. So I don't want to do just small magazine pieces, which there's nothing wrong with. There's absolutely nothing wrong with. Um, it's just not what I normally stitch. So um, I didn't want to be stitching all these wonderful things and then coming to a magazine pattern and knowing that I had to pick something out of a magazine just to stitch. So what I've decided is on the magazine patterns I'm going to do also physical patterns, so patterns that you actually hold. So it would be things like mirabilias, um, you know, things that you've printed, not things that you've printed but things that you've ordered and they've come as an actual leaflet or booklet as a pattern. So that makes that little bit of a set, that little um, category a little bit easier to fill um because i have actually have got a mirabilia that i'm starting next month for my birthday um which i cannot wait it's my first one so um so yeah so that's the theory behind it um and then at the end of each month what i'll do is i'll do an update video of what i've worked on and um, hopefully what i've finished and then um i'll do what i'm going to be stitching on in the next month um, so you know what to look forward to if there is anybody that actually watches these videos. So, I started cross-stitching last year, the very beginning of 2017. 
like I said, I don't know anybody that cross stitches, so I didn't grow up with cross stitch. Um, I didn't have um, a gran or a nana or, you know, my mum didn't stitch. It wasn't passed on to me when I was younger. Um, so I actually came into it in a bit of a strange way, really. Um, in England, we have like every January, they bring out these magazines that you buy either weekly or fortnightly and it builds up a collection. So they do it every year. I think it's because it's the beginning of the year and people are looking at new things to start. Um, cause it's like a new year. What, what, what can I do? You know, I'm looking forward to doing something different. So they always bring stuff out and it's things like, um, action heroes or build a model car or a plane or baking cakes or, um, knitting, sewing. There's always something crafty that comes out in January. And last year it was cross stitch. They brought out a weekly magazine. I think it was weekly or it might be fortnightly. Um, and you bought this magazine and every week you got floss and it was to work up to doing a sampler. Um, and then obviously you got all the patterns and you put it in a binder and it creates a collection. So the first one, you got some floss, you got some Ada and you got the magazine. And it was really cheap. The first one's always the cheapest. It was 99p. So it's a dollar, about a dollar in America. And then the weeks after it goes up to like $4 or three ninety nine dollars over in England. So that's what I bought. I thought that looks all right. 99p. Let's give that a go. Never cross stitch. Never thought about cross stitching. Never crossed my mind. Let's give it a go. Let's just buy the magazine and give it a go. So that's what I did. So I've got one. It's not the first one, but I'll show you what it's like. So it's like a little booklet. Um, yeah, cross stitch. Comes with some, it's, it's really thin. Um, it has holes already made so you can put it in the binder which you get later on in the series so this is basically what you got every week fortnight um, and you built up the collection so and then like this you can tell that I've not done this <laughs> my very first start my first whip and I've just not I've not even done this but then you get two floss I don't even know what floss it is. it's probably not DMC no idea but you can tell how much I have not done this is the floss. This is the floss from all the weeks. So, and there's just, there's just tons of it. So yeah, you can tell I haven't, I haven't done much on it, but yeah. So that's all the floss. Doesn't tell you what colors they are. Oh, actually it does tell you what the colors are. Bamboo, cornflower blue. So I've not even looked to see if these are DMC colours, but yeah. Um, so I've got all that. And I'll show you the sampler, which I started. It's my oldest whip. I've done nothing on it. It's not something that I would normally stitch. Um, it's lovely. And I bet a lot of people have done it. I am going to finish it because I'm one of them people that when they start something, it will be finished. It may take me a while. I'm going to get around to doing this, but... This is the sampler when it's finished. And the teapot was the first thing that you stitched. And that was the first thing I ever stitched in cross stitch. And I'm going to do a video in a couple of weeks after I've done my first update video of the whips that I've got. Um, my finishes that I did last year. Um, so you can see them. So it's kind of like a whip parade. Stroke, finishes, parade. Um, so I'm going to do that. But... It did have my very first cross stitch I finished in it. So I will show that. So the first thing that I ever finished, so this is the binder. So I've got two of these. So these are all the the projects. There's a lot of things I wouldn't stitch, actually. Let's see if I can get that back again. That red one that I've just gone past. There we go. So the very first thing that I stitched and completed was this now i didn't do it in red i did it in blue because the colors in my living room are gray blue and white and and light brown so that was the first thing i stitched and i've got it here in a frame i'm so embarrassed i'm really sorry i was so excited to have it finished i just chucked it in a frame mckenna honestly girl You'd, you'd be shocked. 
it's um oh it's so embarrassing anyway this is my framed sorry about the glare my framed very first cross stitch i'm going to show you the back i was so you probably just saw it then i was so wanted to get it in a frame and get it in my room and be like it's done um yeah i'm just going to show you it speaks for itself look at the state of that i'm so embarrassed i'm sorry it looks fine from there <laughs> but yeah that's the back of it i need to sort that out i can't even call that an ffo because it's not it's not fully finished that that is just, that's that i'm sorry i'm sorry i have to put it down i'm sorry i'm sorry so yeah so that was the first thing that i ever finished and framed I'm sorry. Please don't judge me. <laughs> I I wasn't gonna show it, and then I thought no, because if it makes somebody smile and it makes somebody laugh today, then that that is what needed to be done. So yeah, so there we go. So that was the first thing I ever finished. The last thing I ever finished before my stitchy bug disappeared off on its Caribbean cruise, wherever it went, um, is my colourful day now this was done on 14 count a dot that actually came with the kit all the floss it was a chinese kit um i didn't know much about i'd never done a chinese kit before i didn't know anything about chinese kits i just saw it was a reasonable price let's give it a go let's order it so this is my colourful day it took me a month a solid month of stitching i didn't stitch on anything else just this and i stitched on it every day for like 10 hours a day but that's my colorful day it needs washing it needs ironing it needs framing properly framing not like my first ever cross stitch do you know what i'm actually thinking i might leave it like that i'm thinking it'll always remind me It'll always make me smile. It will always make me laugh. I think I might leave it there. Actually, leave a comment and leave, if there's anybody who watches this video, leave a comment and tell me what I should do with it. Should I leave it as it is? Or should I properly frame it? Um, because it just, it makes me smile every time I see it. I'm just so embarrassed about it. But yeah, so leave a comment, please. Um, and then I'll show you one more finish that I did last year, which was my birthday start. And this one is from the Artsy website and it's actually one of their free patterns. I don't know if it's still there. I don't know if you can still get it. They do have a Facebook page as well if you join and you can get free patterns off there. I actually think I got this one off the Facebook page but it's Angel Moon and this was my birthday start in September last year and there she is. I think I did this on 18 count Ada. Um, two strands, DMC floss, and she's just lovely. I love the detail on her. Um, yeah, I've only ever worked on Ada. Um, obviously because that was what I got with the kit. That's what I've just used ever since because I know that I can sew on it. Um, over the months it's got smaller and smaller and smaller so you know obviously started on 14 count Ada, um, 16 count Ada, 18 count Ada, I think I've got 20 count Ada um, and I bought and it arrived yesterday my first piece of linen which I am going to be stitching on next month which I'm quite nervous about, excited, um, going to learn something new so yeah so um I've, I've been an Ada girl and a stitch in a hoop. I love my hoop. My hoop is, I, I just love holding it and that feeling of just, I just love it. Um, I probably will get a stand at some point for my larger projects because I have got some large projects. They're not all small. Um, so yeah, but at the moment I've been an Ada and a hoop girl and um, I'm delving into the world of linen next month and i probably won't look back we'll see i'll probably still use ada for um for full coverage 
but for other projects I'm probably going to start using linen. Um, I'm quite interested in trying out 25 count um, Lugana. Um, a lot, you hear a lot of people talk about Lugana uh, fabrics so I might give that a go. Uh, the problem that I have where I am is that um, I have a small craft shop and it's not dedicated to cross stitch. They only um, supply DMC, not, not even DMC sorry, they only supply anchor thread um, and it's not a full range. Um, they do Ada, they don't do any other fabrics, they have a couple of kits, um, but yeah, there's nothing. There's, you can't physically look at stuff, you can't hold stuff, um, so, and you'll... I, there's something there's some questions that I want to ask at the end um and they'll relate to why um I'm asking them because I just I can't see anything. Um everything's off the internet. I'm worried about ordering fabric in case I don't like it, um, if I don't use it. Um so yeah, it's it's not easy. Um it's not like in America where, you know, I people talk about Joanne's and the local L and S stores and it's it's not like that over here in England. Um so yeah, it does cause a little bit of issues when trying to buy stuff and try new things. But um hopefully um I might be able to get some help off you guys and um pick your brains and you know you can help me out slightly. So so yeah, so that's a a, a small section of what I did last year. Um so what I want to do is, um, I just want to say thank you to a couple of people. Um, some floss tubers that I watch, basically. Um, the first one is um, uh, Arlene uh, ABC. Um, she is an absolute wonderful woman. Her videos are so inspirational. If you've never seen them, I, I honestly, if you like your crafts, it's not just cross stitch, she does a lot of stuff. She does bobbin lace, she does tutorials on her bobbin lace, um, she does black work, um, she does cross stitch, she does counted canvas work, um, hard angle, she does all sorts of stuff. Um, she's very inspirational, she's a storyteller, um, her stories are absolutely fantastic. Um, the information that she knows about the stuff that we all do like the history and just she's she's wonderful absolutely wonderful and she actually encouraged me to be able to change patterns to how I wanted them color conversions if I didn't like something change it to something else um yeah she's she's absolutely wonderful so go and check out Arlene ABC um also I watch Teresa Little Stitcher she's lovely absolutely lovely dead bubbly I love her videos um, I could watch them all day and I did the other day. I sat down and stitched and I binge, binge watched from start to finish her, her videos um, over three days I think it was. Um, absolutely love her. She's wonderful and she actually is a very keen gardener so if you like your gardening she does talk about gardens. She's got a couple of bits in a video where she actually shows you around a garden. Um, so yeah there's that. Um, I've also been watching Teresa Craig, who's Australian, and she's enabled me so much over the last couple of weeks. Um, I'm actually going to be buying for my birthday when I get some money next week. Um, I'm going to be getting a Luca S um, design. Um, not the one that she does in her videos, but um, I've seen another one on the website that I'm going to be getting. So she's enabled me. She's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. If you haven't watched any of her videos, go over to Teresa Craig and have a look for the one where she talks about her mum buying her a gift from America while she was there over on holiday. I cried with laughter. I actually, I had tears streaming down my face, crying with laughter over that. It was brilliant. So go and check out them three. There are many, many more that I watch and I'm sure I'll mention them over, over videos and stuff and um, things that I've seen, but yeah brilliant brilliant people absolutely wonderful people so yeah um if you've got the time and if you've never you probably have most most people have but if you haven't seen them then, then they're the ones to watch for me um so i've got some questions if anybody can help so um the first one i mentioned about my little craft shop that's near me um they only do anchor threads it's not a full range 
And what I'm wondering is if there's anybody in the UK that is watching, um, where do you get your threads from? At the moment, I'm getting my floss from so-and-so, and I think it works out at 72 p a skein. What I will say is they're £1.10 where I get mine from, um, where I used to get mine from, £1.10 a skein. So that's over a dollar in America uh, for one skein. Um, so at the moment I'm paying 72p a skein on so and so. Um, I'm just wondering if there's anywhere that does them cheaper. Um, I'm not bothered about getting them from so and so because the post and packaging is only a pound um, and it comes next day near enough all the time. Um, so it's quite reasonable. Um, so there's no point me getting them from somewhere else if they're like 68p but I'm paying £4 post and packaging because it just works out more expensive. So um, yeah, if there's anybody who knows, if you can just leave a comment below. Um, again, if anybody watches, I'm hoping somebody's going to watch this. Um, that would be really helpful. The other question that I've got is um, I started a project last year. Um, I got it from, I got, I, got the, I got the project from a book. Um, this is what, this was the first thing that I ever changed, colour conversion, changed the pattern. This is the piece that after watching Arlene's videos, I was like, I'm going to go and do this because I wanted, I wanted to do it, but I didn't like it. Actually, I don't know if I've got the book. Just bear with me one second. Sorry about that. So yeah, so I started this project last year, inspired by Arlene. It's from the Victorian Needlepoint. Um, so it's not even a cross stitch pattern, it's, it's Needlepoint. Um, but I really like this design and I kept looking at it and I was like, I wonder if I can do that in cross stitch. It, it seems easy enough, it's little coloured squares, you know, just change them to crosses on on your uh, on your radar so she inspired me to do this um i changed the colors i changed the background i like the birds and the flowers that's what that's what it was um so the problem that i had was i did it from stash um i had a lot of on DMC threads, cheap threads that I've got from China in bulk order. All, you know, no idea what colours they are. I've not got a DMC colour chart, so I can't match them. Um, I had no idea. So what I did was, I did this one. The trellis. And what I did was, I changed the colours. I did the trellis bit, the flowers and the birds I changed the background and I thought I had enough thread to do the whole thing and it turns out I didn't it's nearly done and it's been sat here for eight months eight months nearly done an hour maybe an hour of stitching maybe to finish it and I can't do anything with it so what I did was I put bricks in the background. Now, this hasn't been washed out, hasn't been ironed. So this, let me get it the right way up, is what I did. And as you can see, that's my issue. I've run out of the green. And all I've got left is that leaf and that bit of a leaf there and it's finished. Now, I have been through every green that I've got. I have been through every kit that I've got. I've been to the shop. I have tried to match it and I can't find this green. I don't know if it's been faded over time, the green that I've had. I don't know. I, I don't know how to get this green. I don't know how to match it up. I just don't know how to, I just don't know what to do with it. So what I've got is this little bit left. That's all I've got. 
six strands of that. It might. No, it's not gonna. It's not gonna finish it. I thought about using it and seeing if I could finish it, but I think I'm not gonna be able to finish it. And if I use it, then I'm not gonna be able to match it. So I'm wondering, how do I match this with not being able to physically see the colours? I thought about buying every green in the DMC line, but then I'm going to end up with a load of greens that aren't going to match and I don't even know if it's going to match anyway. So if anybody's got any ideas on how I can turn this into finishing this that's been sat there for several months unloved unfinished i'd really appreciate it because it's really it's 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 sad that it's not finished it's sad that it's sat there and i've only got that so yeah if anybody's got any ideas that would be absolutely wonderful um i'd love to get it finished um like i said it'd be done in an hour hour or two it, it's done it's a it's a it's a finished it's it's a less it's one less whip it's one less whip for me um so yeah so there's that so they're my two questions and i think that was pretty much it for my first video um i'd just like to say thank you um if anybody watches in advance i'm just going to say thank you because i've been nervous about doing this but i wanted to share what i do um I put so much time into it, hundreds of hours of work, and I don't get to show anybody. So, yeah, it's be nice if somebody watches. So, that's going to be it. That's my first video. And hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll get to see you all again at some point. So, thank you. And happy stitching, everybody. Hope you have a wonderful day working on your whips, many your many whips, or your new project, or coming up with what you're going to do next. And um, I'll see you all soon, hopefully. So thank you. Bye.